morning, brethren. It's good for us to be here. Got a little container here. We're talking about our container a little bit. See, um, if I if I was to submit myself, my body to be burned, I could fit it in this container right here. So that's all he's asking for is one small container. This right here. Now, I've dialed it up a little bit. You know, we like to do that to our containers. That's all he's asking for. You know, he, how, how, what is your life? What does it consist of? And what does his life consist of? Now, see, you, you can't compare them to. All glory in heaven and earth. This was the one that thought it not robbery to be equal with God. And he laid it all aside. He set it all aside. And he was made in the form of a servant. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. And became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. This is not about me. This is about Jesus. This is about what he did. I don't really want to think about what would Jesus do. I want to know what Jesus did. Jesus died for the sins of the world. He took upon himself the personal responsibility. You can't get much closer to a person than that. Everything that you were due, Jesus had to take on that personal responsibility. Why? Because he loved us. He set his love upon us. This I say then. Walk in the Spirit. Well, that's where Jesus is. He's in the Spirit. He's not in the flesh. And you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Amen. For as many of us as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Now, how many, you know, I know this is not popular, but it's going to be popular in heaven. How many by a show of hands, are living in the Spirit. I know there's nobody here that's ashamed of Jesus. Everyone, I'm living in Jesus. Well, if you're alive, that's the only place you are. Okay? You know, I, I was thinking about this. This is quite a, a privilege. See, I get to see you. You know, when I get up here, I get to see you. I get to look down. I mean, how pleasant it is. How beautiful it is to look at the saints of the Most High God. Amen. So you, you are, um, as I look out there, I see sons and daughters of Christ. The servants of the Most High God would show us the way of salvation. How beautiful are your feet. I see heirs of God, and I see joint heirs of Christ. I see a part of the holy city, the new Jerusalem that's soon going to come down from God out of heaven. I see those who are in, in preparation, they're readying themselves for that day. That's the day. The day, the day we really get started. Dearly beloved, Peter here, he's begging us. He's going to beg you. He says, I beseech you. I'm begging you. As strangers and pilgrims in this world, because that's what you are, walk in the Spirit. See, that's really what he's saying. Saying abstain means walking in the Spirit. And you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. See, the lust of the flesh, and one aspect that's is all we have to do with. Another since it's just the lust of the flesh. It's just a temporary thing. It's something that's soon going to be gone, and it's never again going to enter into your mind. The former things are never again going to come to remembrance anymore. You've only got a little bit more time to think about them. A little bit more time to subdue them. Awake and put on your strength. Walk in the Spirit. Amen. That's the only strength we have. If you want to do it in your flesh, you're going to die. See, in the Old Covenant, 
He said, you do it, or I'm going to kill you. Now, you look, you look at it, that's, that, you are going to die. You weren't alive to God. So what did he do? He killed Jesus. That's what he did. It pleased him because he was bringing you to heaven. That was it. It was for you. God was thinking about you when he turned, as it were, his face from you. He was receiving you while he was rejecting Jesus. And he made a way that we could escape the corruption that's in the world through us. How walk in the spirit. Shake yourself from the dust. There's a lot of dust around us nowadays. Shake it off of you. It doesn't profit anything. Shake it off. Just gets in your eyes. Makes it hard to see the celestial city. Makes it hard to see it, but shake it off of you. Get up, get out of it. Arise and sit down in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Amen. That's, where, that's our home. That's where we really feel comfortable. We don't feel comfortable here. I mean, even at your worst state, you don't feel comfortable here. Rise up with Christ and you're comfortable. You're at home. It's where you belong. You've been, you've been made for that reason. For this very reason. You've been made to fellowship with God. Now walking in the Spirit. Walking in the Spirit. You, you say this in some places and it's ooh, mystery. Oh, it's clouded with mystery. Everything's, oh, I don't know. Let's, let's close our minds to reality and let's see if we can figure out the mystery. That's not what it's all about. That's, that's, that's not what walking in the Spirit means. Walking in the Spirit means walking in the realization that my sins are gone. That the, Christ is at God's right hand right now, interceding for me. And when I, when I fall, I have an advocate with the Father. Amen. I'm walking in the Spirit. Amen. Yeah, you, you, can't, you can't look in, at heaven. You can't look into the eyes of God. Now, I'm speaking as a man. And sin. You got to walk away from that. You got to walk in the flesh. If you're going to sin, you can't do it in the spirit. There is no sin in Christ. So, you know, I, I thought, Father, why did you give me this topic? And he says, Why did you choose it? Because this, he's showing me. He's showing me. You know, sometimes he shows you in the opposite. So let's say, You spent too much time in the flesh, Brother Bob. Hey, get out of the flesh. You want a fellowship with me? Come on up. Come up higher. Come. Let's reason together. Amen. Let's just think this thing out. It just makes sense. It makes all the sense in the world to walk in the Spirit. Amen. It's insanity to walk in the flesh. Amen. For thus saith the Lord, you were sold for nothing. See? One small cup of ashes. That's all he asked. You give up yourself. You do it. And all things are yours. All things. Now God's a big God. And he's not done. This is just the beginning. He's not done working. You know, I mean, this is the, the introduction to eternity. You know, you, you hear some people's sermons, the introduction is... Really good? Well, this has been a really good introduction, wouldn't you say? Wouldn't you say that God's done really well on the introduction? And he's not going to run out of steam. No, no, our God, he's got all power in heaven and earth, and soon he's going to, the elements are going to melt. Now, people don't like to hear about the elements melting because you can't really have a whole lot to say. I mean, what are you going to do? You say, well, I don't believe it, but, and they all agree. If the elements ever did melt, we'd be in trouble. Every promise of God is yours. He promised it to you. Now, that is if you're living in the Spirit. That is if you believe the promises. Because actually, you think about it, that's the only thing a promise is good for, is believing. I mean, on our side, now we know that God's already fulfilled. In God's mind, it's as if it was already done. But in our minds, the promises do us no good if we don't believe them. 
But if you believe them, I mean, you, you, you can, you can, the implications of this are eternal. You say it's an eternal ramification. Do you believe? God says, you believe the promise that I gave you? Well done, thou good and faithful sirs. Now, you've been faithful over a few things. This is for you. And then you'll respond, and you'll cast your crown at his feet, and you'll say, Lord, I, it was of you. You gave me the Holy Spirit. You gave me the power to overcome. I couldn't do it on my own. You proved it to me. You gave me the law. You showed me, oh God, what was good. You showed me what was good. And you showed me what you required of me. And you worked in me both to will and to do of your own good pleasure. And you gave me all things that pertain to life and being. And you conformed me into your image. And you delivered me this blessed gospel that was able to, to sanctify me and set me apart and deliver me into your presence. An abundant entrance. And it was all because of what you did. And see, I mean, you could take that to the extreme, I know. You know. But I want to take it to the extreme. I want to take it all the way to heaven. Because, you know, if we, if we stop short of that, then we've actually, you know, this may sound bad, and it is bad, we frustrated the grace of God. You have the power to frustrate the grace of God. You say, well, uh, that's a lot of power. No, that's, that's not a lot of power. That's, that's what God's given you. God gave you to choose this day who you're going to serve. Well, what do you think that choice entails? I mean, it's got to mean something. God's not just playing with us. He says, you choose. And then he's standing by, wants to see what, is, what he choose. Because see, all those that chose him... He has an eternal destiny, one that we can't hardly comprehend. Now, we can see it by the Spirit. We can sense that it's good. You know, we're tasting of the powers of the world to come. We're tasting of the divine nature. You know, but, but at the same time, God honored. If you, if you choose not to, if you say, I will not have this man to rule over me, God's, God's going to honor that. He's going to deliver you to the lake of fire. He's going to do it. God's really going to do it. So it's, not, it's not a game with God. When his son had to lay down his life, it wasn't a game with God anymore. It wasn't like, I'm just, this is just a big project. No, it cost him his blood, his life. And he's left us here in this container. And this is not, a, this is, you know, this is, this is serious stuff. Why did he do that? He left me here in this body and he said, walk in the spirit. You know, ball's in your court now. Speaking as a man, that's, what are you going to do? You have this evil, carnal nature, one that hates God, hates, actually just about hates everything, you think about it. It's just bad. It's just a bad nature. To, I mean, you, anytime you think about the body, only, the world's the only one that talks good about the body. The church don't talk good about the body. It's, it's our body of corruption. It's our vile body. It's, it's a bad. It's bad news. But we've been given good news. See, we're more than that now. We're more than just the fallen nature. We've been received, we, we, we've received a new, a new nature, a new man. And who did that? The same one that created everything you see. He created that in you. He made it. Well, now it just makes sense that God wants to see what you're going to do with it. You know, he created the animals and, and brought them before Adam. He wanted to see what's he going to do. What's Adam going to call these? You know, and some people say, well, God put it in his mind. I, I, he wanted to see what's he going to do. We know we're parents. We know how that, that, that kind of excitement. You know, uh, God wants to see. He wants to fellowship with you. And the only way he can do it is if you walk in the Spirit. And if you do that, you know, then um, you're partners with God. You're, you're, you're workers together in this project. Does that mean that God's uninvolved? No, of course not. He's always involved. Does that mean we're uninvolved? No. How could that happen? 
the workers together with God. <clears throat> He's given us to believe, and yet it's our heart that had to believe. Amen. We had to be involved in it. God didn't arbitrarily just select me, pull my name out of the, you know, the hat there and say, oh, it's Robert. He's going to be there. Well, and I want to be there. And he's assured me that if I want to be there, I'm going to be there. See, that's, 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 that means a lot to me. It means a lot to me because, you know, it, David was the apple of God's eye. David said, keep me as the apple of your eye. Keep me. Yeah, see, uh, there, David knew. David knew somewhat about God. And when he was confronted with the sin, he, it broke his heart. It broke his heart. And it could break your heart, too. We have a deadly enemy. David knew it. He said, from the wicked that oppress me, from my deadly enemies who compass me about. And I was thinking about the most deadliest enemy I've ever encountered. I was just countered him again last night. It's a deadly enemy. It's my old man. And he comes in and he, Satan, you know, it's the only part of you he can use. Isn't that a good, good news? He came and he said, you know, thou shalt not surely die. You're, not, just, you're okay. Everything's okay. Well, this is the liar. See, we have an enemy. And our enemy is supported with other enemies. Enemies that take full advantage of our personal enemy. You know, James said, no one's tempted by God. God's not, not going to draw you away. God's for you. But you do have an enemy. I mean, he, he says, walk in the Spirit, then he tells you why. For the Spirit lusts against the flesh, and the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and these two are contrary one to the other, so, so much so that you can't do the things that you want to do. Now, see, that somebody told me years ago, make sure you want to do the right thing. Make sure that's what you want to do. And um, see, in the Spirit, you always want to do those things that please the Father. I know that because Jesus always did those things that please the Father. Amen. And he had the Spirit without measure. So I know, I can conclude from that, that Jesus always walked in the Spirit. And so, there's, there's the answer. There's the remedy. But oh, this vile body. Oh, wretched man that I am. You know, you, you well, someday, I'd just like to just lay this down. And you will. You'll lay it down, voluntarily or involuntarily. Everyone's going to get a new body. Everyone eventually is going to partake of the new nature, I mean the new body. Now, that for some, it's, it's not going to be as, as exciting as others. You know, I mean, you're looking forward to it. Think about it. You just, you just the contemplation of dying. It's, just, it's kind of exciting, exhilarating. I'm going to get my new body. I'm going to be able to serve God perfectly, acceptably. Amen. You know, I mean, for all eternity, no more of this. And see, you start talking like that, and you start getting excited. I mean, it has that effect on you. It doesn't have that effect on everybody. And one of these days, if someone says some of these days, it's going to happen. It's just going to, it's just going to happen in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Now I'm talking about the second coming. I'm, yeah, I get excited about it. I want it to happen. You know, it, it, and, and that's your evident token. You want it to happen. This is something that excites you. You're walking in the Spirit. You're walking in the Spirit. It's not some mysterious thing that you can't lay your hand on. You love heaven more than you love the earth. You're walking in the Spirit. Flesh and blood didn't, didn't reveal this to you. No, this was the Holy Spirit came in and and, and showed you the things that are shortly going to come to pass. Shortly, I'm going to put off this tabernacle. And I don't care what they do with it. I'm going to be done with it. And I'm going to get my new one. Now that one only dwells righteous. Well, we have a deadly enemy. Now this enemy, you, see, you, you don't want to go too far talking about the enemy. But then again, you, we're not ignorant of his devices. You know, I mean, he, he is our enemy. 
and, I, and, and he's not ever going to stop being our enemy. He's not going to, you know, well, you know, Brother Bob's sick today. I'm going to cut him some slack. No, he's going to press it even more. Press it even more. He's in a bad mood today. Let's see if we can get him in a badder mood. This is the one that was, that was successful in every single person. Brother Dave said this. In every single person in getting them to sin. He's tempted them, drawn them away by their own lust. He's enticed them. Think of, oh, Sister Eve there. She didn't know. She was deceived. She did not know. People say, well, how could they do that? How could the other person over there, how could they possibly do the things they're doing? They don't know. Jesus said, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. They don't know. It says a little bit later, it says, if they had known, they wouldn't have crucified him. If they had have seen who he was, they wouldn't have crucified him. But they didn't know. They were deceived. So we're dealing with an enemy that has the ability to deceive. When you're deceived, you don't know you're deceived. That's, you're deceived. Well, there's no any other way to say it. You don't know it. But the Holy Spirit can come in and it can illuminate. The Holy Spirit opens your eyes. And all at once you can see, I was, I was lost, but now I'm found. Why? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit did, did a work. He didn't do it by himself. The Holy Spirit didn't work that way. The Holy Spirit, somebody had to come, or I had to be in the proximity to where I could hear somebody procla proclaim the marvelous works of God. It had to happen. It cannot happen without the proclamation of the truth. You preach the gospel, and I guarantee you, something's going to happen. You water it down, and you say something of your own, you know, I'm gonna, it's, you're, you've taken the power away from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit wants to come in, and it wants to illuminate men's minds. And Isaiah says, how are thou fallen from heaven? O Lucifer, son of the morning. You look at it, it's almost it's sad. This is a sad commentary. This was one that was in the presence of God. And it's another place that says his tail drew away a third part of the stars. So how impressive is our enemy? How, how capable is our enemy of deceiving? I'll tell you right now, if it weren't for God, none of us would be saved. If it wasn't for the Holy Spirit, none of us would make it to heaven. It would not happen. Not one person is going to make it to heaven that didn't get there through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's going to have a work in every single child, son and daughter, that makes it there. They're going to have a, he's going to have a personal investment in that person. They're going to have walked in him. It's going to have happened. They're going to be, you know... He takes the things of God and he gives them to you. So you, you know how the Holy Spirit feels. If, if you, you know how much you would love to be able to open somebody's eyes up. You just, just talk to them and just, if you could just impart understanding, if you could do that, you'd do it, wouldn't you? You'd do it. Every single one would do it. If I could just do it, that's what the Holy Spirit's job is. Now you want to assist the Holy Spirit? then you tell them what God did. You tell, you tell people what Jesus did on the cross. You tell people what, what, what God's eternal purpose in Christ Jesus is. And the Holy Spirit will be able to open their eyes, be able to illuminate them. We're workers together with Him. With Him, with the Holy Spirit. We are workers together. How beautiful are the feet of those that, that preach the gospel of peace. Oh, it's, you know, it's, I was thinking when we got here, seeing people come in, how beautiful. This is a beautiful thing. You see, iron sharpens iron. You just see the, you know, we're going to have mighty sharp swords when we get done with this. Go out there and do something for God. Now, Satan, you know, he's, he's our enemy by default, really, because he hates God. He hates God. It wasn't like you were so impressive that Satan 
left heaven just so he could hate you. No, Satan hates God. He's lifted up his throne above the Most High. He wanted to be like the Most High, and now you're like the Most High. That's very angering to Satan. He sought to, to have what you have. And now he's intent on making sure that you don't get it. But I've got news for him. Our enemy doesn't have the Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit. Our enemy can't come into the courts of heaven anymore. We can dwell in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. We can, we can live with God. He can't live with God anymore. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. Let's cast him out over and over and over. Just, just cast him out. You had no place here, Satan. You gave up your home. It says they left their, 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 their habitation. They, they left it. They deserted it. So of course they want others to desert. He's out to make us desert. He's out to make us reprobates. That's what he's intent on doing. Amen. He wants to take anything that God's doing, he wants to try to reverse it. He was our murderer from the beginning. See, this is not showing Satan in a very good light, is it? Satan is the father of all lies. Now, this isn't like this is something that he inherited. This is him. This is his nature. He's against God. He hates God. And he hates you because you love God. Because you're like him. You're being conformed into the image of Christ. So is this, is it going to be less, um, is Satan's work going to lessen as we get more like Christ? This is, praise God, our enemy doesn't have access to all things that pertain to life and godliness. Doesn't have access to that. You do. You have access to all things that pertain to life and godliness. Ooh, that's good. That's good. Now, see, it didn't drop down like the do. It's through the knowledge of him. You know, it's, it's, this is the book that Brother Jason wants to write. This is it. This is it. This one right here. If you, if you modify your life to his life, that's walking in the spirit. And it's impossible to do without God, without Christ. I didn't mean anything by that. Word. I'm... I'm our enemy is using our old man to destroy our new man. So, kill your old man. You know, uh, Brother Roy told me a story, Brother Roy Key, talking about how this farmer had a dilemma. It's a problem. I'm going to tell a story now, isn't it good? He had a problem with this horse. He couldn't get him to go through the field without stopping and eating the corn. So how am I going to get him through the field? He said, I figured it out. I shot him before I dragged him to the field. He didn't eat any corn the whole way through. See, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Greater is your new man than your old man. It's greater. See, you, you've been given something from heaven, something that's a part of God. One third of the Godhead is living in you. Oh, that's, that's a lot. That's a lot. Let me tell you right now. If one third of the Godhead can come down and take away the sins of the whole world by the sacrifice of himself, and then one third of the Godhead can come down and address the other problem and live inside of you and, and show you what God's done with the other two thirds. See, this, this is a big thing God's done. It's a big thing we never want to minimize. Walking in the Spirit. Without it, you're dead. He showed you, oh man, what is good. He showed you. Now, this is... They, well, they had the law. Well, so what could he show them? Well, you go read through the law. Just read it. Read it right through. And then you get done. You, you feel about that big. You know? 
I mean, if you're going to do it on your own strength, not in the spirit, you got your work cut out for you. It's, one man used to tell me all the time, it's a full-time job. Full-time. He showed you. Why did he show us? Because God's always been showing us. God, God's not willing that any should perish. He's not willing. So he showed us what's good. He showed us what he's required. He's, um, it, it's his, been his delight to reveal himself to us. You know, in the ages to come, you know, we're just looking forward to seeing more and more about God, what, who he is. I mean, now it's been veiled. It's been through a glass darkly. And, and, we, and we can sense somewhat of the magnitude of the glory, but it's just the hem of the garment. We're just, just barely starting. And we know what's good. And we know we want it. And that's the work of the Holy Spirit. It, it, it's proof, it's evidence that you have the Holy Spirit now, since you're his sons. Uh, the implications of this are just eternal. You're his son? Well, because you're his sons, he's given you of himself. You know, he's, he's put himself inside of you. And, um, you know, and I know that a person doesn't have to stay there and everything, but I want to stay there. You know, I mean, I know that, 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 that it's, it's by choice and you could choose not to, but that's the only thing that's going to separate you. You know, I mean, walking in the Spirit, if you're walking in the Spirit, there's nothing that can hurt you. There's, I mean, so what? They shoot you in the head, you're, you fall. They can't even hurt you. They, they didn't hurt you. Now, you know, it's sad, and, and I don't want to be a smart aleck, but, but this, is, this is how we've got to look at it. You know, that's looking, it says, set your affection, you know, the singular affection on things above, where Christ is. Because if you don't, all this down here is pretty confusing. You know, all this down here, there's a lot of different ways people, people tell you to walk in the Spirit that are just dumb. They're just, they just don't work. You know, it just, it's not real. It doesn't say it in the Scriptures. You know, and I, I don't want to wax into that, but... But that, the Spirit, you know, you can't see it. Jesus said, told Nicodemus, you know, you, the wind, it, it blows, and you can't see it, but you can see what it did, you know, and after a big hurricane, you can really see what it did, you know. Well, we want a hurricane of the Spirit in our life, Amen. you know. We want it to be evident that we're walking in the Spirit. We don't want anybody to look at us and say, well, I don't know, you know, maybe he's not. We want to walk to where when people see you, when they meet you, they know that man knows God. Amen. He sees God's eternal purpose in Christ Jesus. You know, I mean, I could jump up and down the aisle. I could do that. I still have my health. I could jump off here and do cartwheels and everything. I could do that. But there's going to come a day when I couldn't do that anymore. There'll come a day when it'd be, it'd be strenuous for me to do that. Now, do I have less of the Spirit then? You see how some of these doctrines are stupid. That's just what they are. They're stupid. And God's not stupid. And the Holy Spirit's not stupid. If you have the Holy Spirit, you're going to say something that's really, 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 really intelligent. Why? Because it's eternal. You're going to tell me something about Jesus. You're going to tell me something about God. You're going to make me understand more about the eternal purpose of God. And that's walking in the Spirit. If that doesn't happen, then we have a problem. If you, you know, he says, if any man hears the words of God and understands them not, the wicked one, Satan, comes immediately and snatches it away. Why? Because he knows if you understand it, there's some implications there. If you understand the Word of God and you see how it all fits together, it has a, an effect on your life. It has an effect on who you are. Amen. So he's very, very interested in making sure you don't understand the Word of God. Because if you do, then that's more problems for him. He's got more work to do if you understand the Word of God. And just one person understanding the Word of God, and there's just no end to what that person can accomplish. See, we're not dealing with flesh and blood here. 
We're not dealing, we're dealing with principalities and powers in high places. You know, if you can cast those down just by telling somebody about God, just by telling somebody, no, it has nothing to do with that. You know, no, that is, it, this is what it means. And you show them more clearly in the scriptures, you've done something that the implications are just eternal. I mean, it, it's just, just big. You say, well, I didn't build any buildings. I don't have a lot of institutional learning. I guess I'll go sit down now. Well, then see, that was, that was Satan. Yeah, that's, that's, he's got, you know, you, you think about it. We know that we sin whenever we're drawn away of our own lust and we're enticed. And you can see the whole picture there. I like the other verse. It says dragged away. Shows that you didn't want it to happen. You were dragged away. But anyway, do you think the spirit works any different? He draws you away. He says, God, God loves you. Look at all these, these exceeding great and precious promises. Look at all. And you start thinking about them. And he draws you away. Yeah. And before you know it, you're, you're close to God and you want, you want to stay there. Walk in the spirit. That's where the benefits are. Amen. The only place... That's where the real satisfaction is. You know, our enemy is never going to be satisfied. Never. There is no satisfaction for Satan. He's never going to be satisfied. And see, if we're with him, we're never going to be satisfied. If you walk in the flesh, you're, nothing's going to satisfy you. There's only one place to be satisfied, only one place to be filled, only one place you can be like God, and that's walking in the Spirit. And you will not. Now, I wanted to hammer that, really get demonstrative, and just really, dude, this is, this is an absolute guarantee. If this doesn't work, I would go so far as to say the scripture is a lie. Now, this, I don't, don't take that lightly. But this is, it's just God's absolute promise to you that if you'll walk in the spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That's a promise to you. Oh, that I would see that promise more clearly. See, you see the, the, the effects of that to where, I mean, can you imagine heaven always walking in the spirit? Always. It's ah, good. But you are not in the flesh. See, that's what he said. If so, be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. And you know, see, I want to reason backwards here because these promises, these, believing these promises is what helps us or, or makes us partake of the divine nature. So, you know, I, I want to believe this. So I want to think about the promises. Because when I do, I'm partaking of the divine nature. And that's what we need. We need to partake of the divine nature. To walk in the Spirit. If any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his, but we have the Spirit of Christ. And I can prove that. I have proof today that you have the Spirit of Christ. Now, you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Is that right? Hey, yeah, he said, uh, repent and be baptized. So you, were you baptized? He promised, he said, you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So you have the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's proof. If anybody ever tells you you don't have this, you can just tell them they're a liar. Because God promised that he would do that if you would repent and be baptized. So we can reason that out then. You are not in the flesh. Now, you remember when Jesus said, I am no more in the world. Remember? <laughs> See, that's what we need to say more. Now I am no more in the world. Now, yeah, we're here, and we've got to get up and go to work. And we've got some things we've got to do. But we're not really here. Well, See, we're really there. And that's why... He saw the new Jerusalem coming down from heaven, from God, because they were already with God. See, we, we've been raised with him. 
So now see, as we see that, as we understand the implications of that, then we're walking in the Spirit. You know, it, it, this, is not, this is not something that, you know, he exhorts us. He said, this I say then. In light of the fact, now, I know he was talking about the law, you know, foolish Galatians who bewitched you, you know, you, you're going back to the law? You, go, you really want to do that? Go back to the law? See, we don't want to do that. But, you know, it's not just the, Jew, the, the, the Jewish law anymore. Now we've got all these other laws. We've got the Christian law. You know, and, and, and they are so subtle. And people lean on them, you know. And I'm telling you, it's going to pierce you through. You lean on the law at all, and it's going to hurt you. Because it's going gonna, it's gonna to stop you from leaning on Christ. You think, I know exactly how everything's going to work. I'm going to come in, we're going to sing a few songs, and everything's going to be decently and in order, and so much so that that's it. And if that's it, that's it. That's all you got. That's all you got out of that service. But see, God was there. The angels were here. They want to fellowship with you. God wants to fellowship. Amen. You know, but so flesh, it likes to have something concrete that it can lean on. It likes to have something it can rely on. But the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men teaching us denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, or another way to say that is we should walk in the Spirit. It, the grace of God has appeared to teach you that this is, this is all good and well. But if it never comes, gets to the point to where we're fellowshipping with God, on that day, he, this will just, he'll say, I never knew you. I, I wanted to know you. I sent my Son. I gave you my Holy Spirit. I gave you all things that, so that you would come and we would, you would know me. And in the knowledge of me, you would have eternal life. But there's going to be some that say, oh, we did many mighty works in your name. We did all these things. But that's what it says. I'm not making it up. It says, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. With a lot of people there that said, we did a lot of work for you. He said, I never knew you. They never walked in the Spirit. Amen. They never did. Now, see, I know if they walked in the Spirit, Jesus would, was Jesus is there. He would know them, and they would know him. Amen. Woe to them that are ease in Zion. And trust in the mountain of Samaria. Whoa! That's, that's walking in the flesh. Woe unto to them. We want to we wanna lean on the Spirit. We want to lean on something? Le lean on the Spirit. The Spirit knows what the mind of God is. It knows. We can trust the Spirit. You know, I, the example... And I don't want to go into this too much, but the example of creation. You know, I, I've really been thinking about that a lot. It says, we know, I'm still wondering how we knew, but, but we know that the whole creation groaneth together until now. We wouldn't have known it that the Spirit hadn't have told us that. You see, and he says, not only they. See how he's, he's looking at the creation like a, like a person. So much so, he says, this per, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be delivered. And it's, it's, it's waiting. It wants to be delivered. And you want to be delivered. See how perfect that example was? Amen. It's perfect. It wants to be delivered. And it's, and it's going to be delivered. It, wasn't, it didn't want to be under this corruption. But it was placed there for us. Soon it's going to be delivered. Soon we're going to be delivered. See, and it's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. And we're going to get a new body. I love it. I love the way God, you know, he, 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 he says things to where we can understand them. He, he, he gives the perfect analogy so that we can put two and two together and really come up with four. You know, there's a lot of spiritual stuff out there, people coming up with three. It's happening. 
But God, see, God's engineered this whole thing. We can trust in him. This is, God, this is what God's done. Sin shall not have dominion over you because you are not in the flesh. I mean, you may, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, but that's not dominion. See, he's saying sin's not going to have dominion over you. It's a big thing there. God wants your attention. God wants you. And so he says, walk in the Spirit. And then he'll be able to fellowship with you, which I think he wants much more than we can apprehend. He wants to fellowship with us. God wants you. You know, you think about it. God, you are promised to Christ by God. You were. God promised you to Christ. In the ages past, speaking as a man, go down there and lay down your life. We'll be separated. This thing that has never happened will happen. And I'll have to reject you, but I'll give you the heathen for your inheritance. I'll do that. And so he came. And now God wants you. He's made all the preparations have been made. The Holy Spirit's been given, and he's, he's bidding us. This is how we get to the wedding, is we walk in the Spirit. That's how we get there. And um, we got a few minutes. Do we have a few minutes? I don't know what time it is. It's not a rhetorical question. <laughs> okay, just a few minutes. I wanted to, to let Sister Maddie say a few words, if it's okay with the brother. I wanted to give thanks, and I, oh, I, see, I'm going to forget. The tapes that are out here, um, Sister Maddie made them all. So um, I, I want to give thanks for that. It's not something, it's not a light thing, especially with me. It's not, I know what it takes. But, um, and she's going to be very disappointed if everybody doesn't take a set home. They're on the table, and don't worry about it, just, just take them, because I know that uh, they're profitable.